uh hey guys thank you so much for clicking on this video so i wanted to do this live so that um later on you can be able to watch it and learn something new um today i wanted for us to discuss contraceptives because i've been receiving a lot of messages especially in the dms and a lot of people uh, have been asking regarding contraceptives so um, for today i'm just going to give you guys just um, a little bit of information for you to understand contraceptives specifically we are going to focus on hormonal contraceptives since uh, here at wellness ke we always focus on hormone health and then we actually have a scheduled webinar with a professional who's going to be able to walk us through the, the other different kinds of contraceptives and what you need to do in order for you to understand um, some birth control methods. So today, within a very short period of time, I'm going to squeeze in as much, inf uh, uh, as, much as I can um, so that you can learn from the few minutes. So bear with me if I'm going point by point. And I usually like to ramble and discuss a lot of things since this is a subject that I really love. But specifically, I actually focused on um, the key uh, things for you to take away from this conversation. So I wrote them down um, point by point so that I don't go all over the place and so that I can also get your attention in a very short period of time and you can still be able to learn something. So we're going to be talking about contraceptives because they affect many women. This is a topic that affects many women men as well but because this is a platform that focuses on women then we want for women to understand what contraceptives are and also to understand what effects they have on your body so basically contraceptives are actually used so that they can be able to be a, to to become a form of birth control meaning you can actually be able to prevent pregnancy if you have had unprotected sex that means that you can actually end up becoming pregnant this is a woman who um a girl who has actually hit puberty and also a woman who you know continues to have menstruation meaning she possibly can actually have um can get pregnant if she has unprotected sex so we understand why actually contraceptives are used there are some women who actually use contraceptives for other reasons like when they go into a hospital and they find that they have really horrible um signs and symptoms when it comes to pms or their periods then uh, the doctors normally recommend some contraceptive pills um, just so they can be able to just make some chemical changes but that's not what we're going to focus on today we're actually going to focus on contraceptives being used as birth control methods so I want for you to understand that there are different kinds of contraceptives and many options for women um, but what is interesting is for you to know that there actually can be some natural contraceptive methods and also we actually classify them as hormonal contraceptives and non-hormonal contraceptives so when it comes to contraceptives and we're talking about hormonal and non-hormonal it's actually really important for you to know that these two different kinds of contraceptives can actually have different effects on your body so if you choose to go down the hormonal contraceptive route then you know that you know there are some changes chemical changes that are going to happen in your body um, and so the key takeaway here is hormonal contraceptives actually um, are more chemical when it comes to the changes so they actually change your body in terms of the 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 natural processes that take place in your body in order for you to get pregnant so hormonal contraceptives actually you know they they tweak a few things so that these processes don't take place and i'm going to get into that then we have non-hormonal contraceptives non-hormonal contraceptives examples are like a condom is a non-hormonal contraceptive is actually a form of contraceptive where you just need to wear it and then it actually protects you um, and also against a uh, sexually transmitted infection and also it protects you um, against unwanted pregnancy um, and there are also other examples of non-hormonal contraceptives like an IUD that is a copper IUD a copper IUD is actually a type of contraceptive it is t-shaped and it's more mechanical meaning it is um, fitted into uh, a woman's um, uterus it's an inter intrauterine device that is fixed 
so that it can actually um, release copper ions because the copper IUD actually releases copper ions and these copper ions end up um, acting as a spermicide. Literally, if you have unprotected sex and you're using a copper IUD, that simply means that, you know, when the sperm enters a woman, that means the copper IUD is actually going to act as a spermicide. The copper ions actually kill the sperm so that they don't end up fertilizing a woman's egg. So this is another example of um, a contraceptive that is non-hormonal. Um, there are other examples of non-hormonal contraceptives, but today let's focus on hormonal contraceptives so that we can really understand because it's a really, really broad uh, subject. Um, and let's understand why they end up making changes. And also let's understand why later on when women are off the hormonal contraceptives, it can be a little bit harder for them to actually get pregnant. Okay. So in order for us to understand a hormonal contraceptive, we have to understand how it actually works, okay? So a hormonal contraceptive is a type of contraceptive that actually releases doses of hormones in a woman's body, into the blood bloodstream, right? So you actually use this contraceptive, and what it does is it actually contains uh, some type of uh, hormones that are released into your body, and into a woman's bloodstream so that it can make some chemical changes so that certain processes in a woman's body don't actually take place. So let's talk about these types of um, uh, physiological changes that actually happen. So a hormonal contraceptive has can work in three different ways. The very first one is through preventing ovulation. Okay, so as a woman, every month you actually go through something called ovulation and ovulation is very simple for you to understand you have your menstrual cycle and then you have your complete cycle let's say for instance a woman who has a 28 day cycle so if you have 28 days you can split them into two you have day one of menstruation um, and count all the way till half of the 28 days which is 14 right so on day 14 from day one to day 14 this is actually a different phase that is more of menstruation and then you're still recovering after menstruation. Then you have mid-cycle where you get to go through ovulation. And ovulation is actually a process where a woman's ovaries get to release an egg. Okay, so they, uh, the ovaries get to release an egg and this egg travels uh, through the fallopian tube hoping to get fertilized by a sperm. So I want for you to understand this process so that you understand how a hormonal contraceptive is actually going to prevent pregnancy. So once the, the ovaries actually release the egg, what happens is it travels down the fallopian tubes and also hoping to meet, you know, a sperm so that it can be fertilized. What happens is um, a hormonal contraceptive actually works in such a way that it prevents ovulation meaning instead of you actually going through a process where you can release the egg um, a hormonal contraceptive can can actually prevent this entire process okay so this part is important for you to understand because sometimes when women are off uh, contraceptives what happens is they actually have a difficult time uh, conceiving or get, getting pregnant and this is because for years and years as they were using a hormonal type of contraceptive they were literally telling their body um, to actually not go through ovulation so when it's time now for them to actually get pregnant it's a little bit harder or it takes a while sometimes it takes months sometimes it takes a year sometimes it takes longer and i know there are women who have reached out to me on wellness ke who are actually currently experiencing this but the moment they understand that they were on a hormonal type of contraceptive and it created such certain changes in their bodies and forced their bodies to go through something that was not so natural now they understand why um you know the body was understanding a certain type of language and now it needs to do something a little bit different so that part is really important. Number one, a hormonal contraceptive actually works by preventing ovulation so that you do not release the egg so that the sperm does not have an egg to fertilize. The second one that's really important for you to know is that it actually works by thickening the cervical um, mucus and actually uh, a woman's um, cervix, right? Because this actually prevents the sperm from um, being able to 
uh, fertilize a woman's egg. So if you if you think about your a woman's body and what happens for her to get pregnant, there are a lot of things that actually happen in a woman's body in order for her to get pregnant. But in order for for you to actually not get pregnant and you are on a contraceptive, some of these these um, processes that take place actually um, they are almost nullified, such that they don't take place or they are blocked, so that they don't get to a place where you can either produce an egg or your egg can be implanted um, and things like that. The third one that's actually important is um, for us to know is that a hormonal contraceptive actually makes the endometrial wall, the endometrial lining, which is the wall of the uterus, it actually makes it thin. Okay, so what happens is when a woman goes through ovulation, so you actually release the egg, um, the body naturally tells itself it's expecting pregnancy, okay? So it's expecting the egg to be fertilized. Whether it will be fertilized or not, the body of a woman naturally tells itself that it is expecting pregnancy because you've released an egg. And so what happens is your uh, endometrial lining, which is the wall of, the, of your uterus, it naturally just starts getting thicker. It thickens up. And the purpose of it thickening up is so that once your egg is fertilized, it can actually travel down and actually attach itself on this wall. So when the wall is thick, the egg attaches itself and does not fall off. But when the wall is thin, the egg attaches itself and it actually falls off. So a woman using a hormonal, a certain type of hormonal contraceptive actually you know the contraceptive actually ends up um, thinning the endometrial lining or the uterine wall of that woman so that even if she has unprotected sex and she has gone through ovulation and her egg is released and the sperm meets the egg and fertilizes it what happens is it still travels but then instead of it you know when it attaches itself instead of it attaching and growing into a fetus and then eventually into a baby what happens is the wall actually is thin so the egg literally just slips okay such that it cannot attach itself and stay on um, in order for it to grow so yes you go through the ovulation yes you go through the fertilization but then you end up losing the egg so the different kinds of hormonal contraceptives actually work in different ways and it's really important for you to know and to ask questions and to ask your doctor questions in terms of like you know what this type of contraceptive is going to be to do to your body you know like ask them like if i use this type of contraceptive how is it going to prevent pregnancy such that when you do get to a place where you actually want to have children or you want to start a family You'll actually understand what type of changes your body went through before and you will be more aware when you actually have a delayed conception or you have a much harder time, you know, starting a family or getting pregnant. Um, this part is important for women to know and if you, you know, if you feel like this is information that someone else can be able to benefit from, then, you know, you can share a link to this so that they can fully understand. But I wanted to share with you guys some examples of hormonal contraceptives. The most common one is the hormone pill, okay? The hormone pill, the birth control pill. Um, everyone knows this type of contraceptive. Uh, majority of the women are actually on this hormonal contraceptive and statistics are confirming that it's over 100 million women worldwide that actually are on the birth control pill. It is the most common. It is the one that is literally So it is a type of contraceptive that many women are currently using. But what I do know is that not many are aware of what this type of contraceptive actually can do. So um, they don't understand what it contains um, and how it's going to actually make some changes in their body. For instance, you have two kinds of hormonal, uh, the hormonal pill. There are some hormonal pills that actually con contain both progestin and estrogen okay so we know of the sex hormones progesterone and estrogen estrogen is commonly known as a female hormone because it is in excess in women 
um, but it also exists in men. But it is the hormone that's responsible for menstruation, it's responsible for a lot of other things like pregnancy and your heart health and your body temperature, which is why women who have imbalances of estrogen get to have hot flashes and your brain and cognitive function even memory and things like that so estrogen is actually really really important and then there's progesterone which is known as the pregnancy hormone it's actually the one that's responsible for thickening that wall such that when the wall is thick enough when your egg is fertilized it can actually attach itself and you can have a full term pregnancy without having a miscarriage so these hormones actually exist naturally and are secreted naturally in your body but with a hormone pill they they actually try and use a type of more or less like a synthetic um, version of these uh, contraceptives and so you can either have a, a contraceptive a hormone pill that contains both progestin which is a synth synthetic version of progesterone and also estrogen so a pill that contains both or a pill that only contains estrogen Okay, so you when you're going in to see your doctor, for instance, and they're talking to you about you know using a hormone, a, the hormone pill, uh, or being on birth control, uh, the birth control pill, then you need to also know your medical history. For instance, if you are a woman that has fibroids, if you have you are a woman that suffers from high estrogen levels, painful periods, heavy periods, um, if you have issues like endometriosis you have family history of breast cancer and things like that, then you understand that your estrogen levels are quite high. And because of that, then you might not want to choose an option that is actually either going to increase your estrogen levels or cause an imbalance. So this is why this part is really important for you to understand. So the hormone pill is one example that is quite, you know, almost everyone out there knows the hormone pill. Another type of hormonal contraceptive is the patch. I'm sure you've heard of the patch. Uh, many women have actually been using this one as well. Um, I remember growing up and I would hear like older women talk about this and I, I had no idea. But what I do remember is majority of them were probably just advised by the doctor to use it. And what I what I, I like, I like to question. I like to ask questions and, and find out if women know what the patch is and how it actually ends up causing you know preventing pregnancy and if that is going to later on cause some type of you know issues once you want to, to get pregnant um, another one is actually an IUD intra intrauterine device so with uh, with an IUD um, there are two kinds you can either have the copper IUD which is not hormonal it actually contains copper and it releases copper ions so that one is more of a mechanical it actually changes it but mechanically and then you have the hormonal IUD which is more of um, a, a hormonal contraceptive that releases doses of hormones so for women out there who are on the IUD who I know have reached out to me and asked questions regarding it um, it's also important for you to understand are you on the hormonal IUD or are you on the the one that the copper IUD the one that's more mechanical causing mechanical changes and if so understand like what that does to your body and if you're still on that journey to you know starting a family or becoming pregnant then understand that the moment also you get off these contraceptives there are some changes and they might you might need to take some time before you actually get pregnant you know and it's not all women some women actually get pregnant but i'm just saying that that part is actually really important right um i want to make sure that i'm not rumbling because my points are all written down um uh, so another form of hormonal contraceptive is like the implant. That's also another one that many women know of. Um, there are some injections that actually do release hormones. And, you know, this one, I feel like I've had more women actually um, talk about the, the side effects of, of having actually the, the injection or getting the injection. Um, and sometimes that means that, you know, that particular woman maybe reacts differently to this particular type of contraceptive, okay? So with these um, types of contraceptives and these options, 
uh, you need to understand that these are the hormonal kinds. There are others that are out there, and I'm sure as research continues, you know, people are going to keep on coming up with new ways. As you found out, we actually have a male contraceptive that is the pill. So men are now going to start taking the pill, but then, you know, research has confirmed that it can actually prevent, you know, a woman getting pregnant. But of course, the more research they do, the more they learn and the more changes they're going to make so that women can also be able to have options that are quite um, safe when it comes to contraceptives. So I wanted you guys to understand like how a hormonal contraceptive actually works and why it ends up preventing pregnancy. Um, and I'm sure, you know, through the information I've given you, you've been able to kind of have a picture or understand. Um, I'm not able to tell how long a life goes for, but I don't want it to be too long. But I wanted for you guys to understand the type of contraceptives, the options, how they end up, you know, preventing pregnancy. So there are some important questions you need to ask your doctor when it comes to, you know, choosing a contraceptive that works for you. And I really feel like this is the, the step that almost every woman skips because the moment you go into a hospital and something is suggested to you, you say yes because this is a professional and you're sure that they know what they're doing. But what we really need to do also is to ask questions because remember, you have your body, you know your body, and you also need to understand your medical history. So I want us to go through some of the things that you can be able to talk to your doctor about the next time you go for a visit um, so that you can understand, you know, the questions to ask them regarding contraceptives. So the first one is you need to understand that, you know, it's only your doctor that can be able to tell you what type of contraceptive you should be on. If you are a woman that does not want to use any of these kinds of contraceptives, maybe let's say the hormonal kind or the kind that actually cause mechanical changes, then that means you would opt for a condom um, or the with withdrawal method. So these two are more considered the natural forms of contraceptives. Um, if you choose these two options, then this part of the conversation, you know, it's not necessarily for you because when it comes to condoms actually the only thing that um, most people maybe have side effects um, uh, suffer from side effects when it comes to condoms it's the latex because they say that the material um, is is something that they react to so that's the only one the only complaint um, that people have had regarding condoms so let's talk about the other kinds of contraceptives that cause chemical and mechanical changes and what questions to ask your doctor. Number one, it's only your doctor that can actually, you know, advise you. This is actually something that you would want to ask your doctor about so that they can give you the right piece of advice. And why they are the right person is because your doctor is actually the person that knows, can, can do some checkup, uh, checkups on you can actually conduct a hormone test and things like that. So they would be the best person to say, you know, judging by you know some of the things that we've done some of the tests we've done you know you would be best suited for a b c d okay so that's number one don't just pick a contraceptive because your friend uses it your sister uses it your mom or you know you think that it's the right thing i've also had people say that you know certain certain types of companies and ngos would go to schools high schools and primary schools and talk to kids about certain um types of contraceptives and then girls would be like well this must be it and then they would all just decide to use it but that's not the best way to go to to, to do it it's important for you to actually go to a doctor so that they can help you with this secondly it's important for you to tell your doctor to actually um, just help you with your your own personal medical history. So for instance, if you are, let, let's take myself for example, um, I have, ha I have a, a history of fibroids. So meaning I have had a history of estrogen dominance, meaning I've had high estrogen levels, and also I have had a blood clot, a deep vein thrombosis and thrombosis is also directly linked to high estrogen levels. So because of these two things, um, you know, for someone like me walking into a hospital and a doctor just suggesting a, hormon a hormonal contraceptive, that might not go well for me because 
for instance, they might suggest a hormonal pill that contains estrogen and progestin, and then it actually takes my estrogen levels, you know, way too high and then puts me at risk of other complications. So that's why it's important for you to actually go through a medical checkup and talk to your doctor about your own personal medical history, personal, related to just you. That's something that's important. Thirdly, make sure that you talk to your doctor about your family medical history. Your family medical history, meaning you can tell your doctor if maybe your mom had fibroids or your auntie ha aunties have had cysts or someone in your family has suffered from, you know, breast cancer or someone in your family has suffered from PCOS. That means you have a history of certain pelvic conditions or other conditions. And so then your doctor needs to really consider that when they are also thinking about options for you. Because as we know, some conditions, genetics, um, end up keeping us or putting us predisposed, meaning you, you're most likely to end up with that condition. And so for that reason, you need to talk to your doctor also about your family medical history. Even if you have a clean bill of health and there's nothing going on or wrong with you, then it's still fine. That's fine, you're okay, but you need to prevent any kind of complications. So family medical history is actually really important when you're discussing um, contraceptive methods. So talk to your doctor about that such that if they do suggest something, then you know it doesn't, it's not necessarily going to affect you later on because genetically you are more predisposed to, you know, suffering from certain types of conditions, especially if they involve hormonal imbalance. Um, it's also very important for you to discuss um, the availability of the contraceptives, the price, because, you know, if you're going to be paying for it, then it's something you need to know if you'll be able to continue paying for it um, and if it will be an option that's going to be available and if, you know, getting it, you're actually going to, it's a place that is accessible. For instance, for someone who is maybe in the rural areas, they might not necessarily be able to be more exposed to a certain kind of contraceptive. And so these options are, these, these factors are actually really important to consider when you're thinking about um, contraceptives. Another very important and controversial point is the side effects. So you talk about the possible side effects. For instance, a lot of people don't know and they don't understand that um, a contraceptive like an IUD, a copper IUD, you know, it actually releases copper ions, meaning it increases your um, levels of copper in the body. And an increase in levels of copper actually means that, you know, you're actually going to lower your levels of zinc. And zinc is actually a really important mineral that you need in your body. And also it, you know, puts you more exposed to certain types of um, possible risk factors. And also contraceptives in general, especially hormonal contraceptives, um, have had a history of having some really... Um, scary side effects for instance blood clots and blood clots or deep vein thrombosis are quite common when it comes to hormonal contraceptives and that's because they actually raise your estrogen levels so again as we say if you're someone who has had this condition before or you have never checked you have never done a hormone test and you don't know and you start using a certain type of hormonal contraceptive, it increases your estrogen levels, you're more at risk of blood clots. So that's important for you to know because blood clots are actually quite dangerous. Um, a lot of women have lost their lives to blood clots and thrombosis. So you don't necessarily want to pick an option that puts you at risk and could end up you know, causing more harm than helping you. Um, also, heart attacks are quite common when it comes to hormonal contraceptives and side effects. So that part is really important. Make sure that you discuss with your doctor the possible side effects. And anything hormonal, remember, is actually going to kind of cause an imbalance because naturally your body is supposed to produce and secrete hormones um, uh, at an optimal level so that everything works together. So if you introduce something else, then understand that there's not going to be a balance. And so if you are on contraceptives, then it is your duty to make sure that you continuously try to balance your hormones. Okay, and we're going to talk about that just a little bit. Another important thing that you need to remember to ask your doctor is to conduct a hormone test. 
okay not many women actually get hormone tests um, get a hormone test uh, but a hormone test is actually going to be really useful because whatever stage of your life if you're in your reproductive years then you need to do a hormone test just to make sure that you can avoid pelvic conditions like fibroids like PCOS like endometriosis because you're going to check the levels of estrogen progesterone male hormones like androgens like um, DHEA and testosterone and things like that once you know these levels then you can avoid because high male uh, hormones in a woman's body cause PCOS and PCOS causes infertility and if you can fix that then maybe the moment you start you know planning to start a family or to get pregnant you can be able to actually fix it and end up you know starting a family so that part is really important okay and then something else that's also important is do you know when you conduct a hormone test you can be able to avoid certain health complications as we said um, like heart attacks stroke uh, blood clots breast cancer all of these are actually caused by hormonal imbalances and if you do conduct a hormone test then you know your levels you can actually be able to start working on them naturally so that you avoid these health complications and when you do conduct a hormone test you make better choices when it comes to a hormonal contraceptive you might actually not even pick a hormonal contraceptive you might go for the non-hormonal kind because you understand that you know the effects uh, might lead to certain complications in the body later on okay so that is actually really really important uh, something else that's also important is the moment that you carry out your hormone test you will you will understand when it comes to um, fertility you will understand if you're struggling with issues with fertility you will understand if you're struggling with um, issues like miscarriages because a miscarriage is is caused by an imbalance in hormones uh, also for instance the hormone progesterone it it is known as the pregnancy hormone because it allows a woman to carry her pregnancy full term so if you have low progesterone levels chances are you might actually suffer a miscarriage because as we mentioned progesterone is supposed to be able to make sure that your uterine wall is thick enough so that when your egg is fertilized it can actually go and attach itself there and it stays on it does not the egg does not fall off so that it can grow and develop into a fetus and eventually a baby so you actually want your progesterone levels to be normal so that your body can actually function normally um, and this part is important for the women out there who feel like they're struggling with their fertility sometimes it's not necessarily an age thing it's more your hormones and where you where, where you were in your 20s for instance let's say it's a woman in their 30s maybe in your 20s you already suffered hormonal imbalance and then you in your 30s things got much worse because you were not necessarily aware of how to take care of yourself you are probably on a contraceptive by the time you get to a certain age and you really want to make changes and you want to actually you know conceive then you find that you struggle um there are some uh, factors that we need to not factors necessarily but some some type of common myths that maybe we can we can bust for instance people talk about weight gain when it comes to using certain types of contraceptives it's important for you to know that every person is different okay so some people react differently to contraceptives and again this is why it's important for you to know your medical history for instance if it's a woman who knows her, her, her personal medical history maybe suffers from thi a thyroid related uh, complication uh, condition rather and she's on a certain contraceptive and she just keeps losing weight or it's an autoimmune disease and she just keeps you know losing weight or certain changes happening keep happening a woman who has high estrogen levels and then starts using a certain type of contraceptive and she gains weight um, because if you don't know your, your personal medical history and you've never done a hormone test then you can never tell you know what type of changes you're going to experience it's going to be something that will happen it will just happen to you you're not going to be able to have control over it you won't know what to do about it etc and just uh, uh, some extra information I should give you is um, if I if I give you the example of estrogen okay in a woman's body 
for instance women who have high estrogen levels understand that you know they also uh, you get to have these signs and symptoms they're almost pregnancy like signs symptoms when you have high estrogen okay you, uh, they're also almost uh, PMS kind of symptoms okay like swollen breasts that are sore and tender and also you do gain weight it's more or less like water weight but for you to understand that estrogen actually um, is stored in fat cells so the body when you when you gain weight you have fat cells right um, not just when you gain weight you naturally have fat cells but when they are in excess estrogen can actually be stored in fat cells that's why when women suffer from fibroids and, and endometriosis and any kind of high estrogen related condition they advise to lose weight because then you lower the number of fat cells in your body and when you lower the number of fat cells then you also reduce the amount of estrogen in your body so if you did suffer from high estrogen now you know you've reduced the number so for instance a woman in this particular situation she might use a contraceptive it could be a hormonal contraceptive it could even be the hormonal pill it could even be the hormonal pill that contains estrogen she keeps in increasing her estrogen levels the more estrogen she has the more you know ch the higher her chances of gaining weight the more weight she gains more fat cells she has more fat cells more estrogen is stored estrogen is all over the place and now high estrogen naturally will lead you to blood clots and fibroids and heart attacks and endometriosis and breast cancer and things like that and so that's why it i keep saying this is a really really broad subject but i wanted for you guys to understand hormonal contraceptives and for you to understand how they end up actually um you know preventing pregnancy in a woman and also for you to understand when you want to choose a, a contraceptive option what you should actually talk to your doctor about um, so that you can be able to prevent any types of um, complications later on so if there is anyone who has a question please feel free to ask the question um, as i mentioned we're actually going to have a webinar really really soon uh, with a professional and this person is going to be able to explain to us um, about more about contraceptives and we can also be able to learn there are some women who currently are actually suffering from from um uh, when, with their fertility so they are suffering from fertility issues they're not able to conceive and they're not able to start families and they feel like you know the the moment they were off the contraceptive there were some changes in their bodies and now they're not able to do something that is supposed to be natural to them um but you know this is why we actually you know wanted to have a professional so that she can come and ask and answer all those questions that you asked and we can be able to learn you know together so does anyone have any questions today and i want to say hi to some of the people that joined um the first name i cannot pronounce w d y j d g j s j hi <laughs> uh body by hi how are you aunt mima hi how are you kanta eddie feral foxy mtis uh Z, hi hi you guys thank you for joining and um if there's anyone who has any questions um you can be able to ask and um you can also be able to share this video uh so that if there's someone else that you feel is going to benefit from this conversation please share it with them so that they can be able to learn i make sure that i just had pointers so that everyone can um learn something so just in case there's anything else um any questions please feel free to ask and i will make sure that you get an answer and usually when we don't have uh the answer at the moment um and we don't have the doctor with us at the moment i just send them a message and the moment that they answer i make sure that i share you know with anyone who has asked the question so yeah i think that we are done thank you guys so much for joining and for just being here thank you i really appreciate and also please feel free to share this video with others so that they can be able to benefit um yeah i'll share when we have our next webinar thank you guys i'll see you guys next time bye enjoy your holiday